Hello friends, welcome to the daily current affairs by NEO IAS. So today on 26 May 2019, we are going to discuss the topic, New Space India Limited, then the SKA project, Artemis, Simlipal Biosphere Reserve and today in MAP Edit program, we will be dealing with important ports in India and prelims question revision series. Okay, so first topic that is New Space India Limited. Okay, so actually uh, why this came in news is that the ISRO's new commercial arm that is New Space India, it is officially inaugurated. That is the news. And let us see what is this New Space India Limited. Actually, it is a new company under the Department of Space to commercially exploit the research and development uh, work of ISRO. Okay, so it is related with the research as well as the development work of ISRO. And this NSIL, it was uh, incorporated on March 6, 2019 uh, for uh, commercially utilizing the research and development, that is a research and development activities that are carried out by the ISRO in the area of space. So, another thing is that it has an uh, authorized share capital of rupees 100 crore and an initial paid up capital of rupees 10 crore. Okay. So, the main objective is to scale up the industry participation in Indian space program. That is its main objective. That is to scale up the industry participation in the uh, Indian space program. And the thing is that it will, it will act like a link between the ISRO and the industry. Okay, so as I said, uh, the main purpose is to facilitate the transfer of ISRO technologies to the private companies. And uh, it will be based in Bangalore uh, and it is a department of space second commercial entity after Andrix. Okay, so it is the second commercial entity after Andrix. Uh, and I uh, will explain what is this Andrix and let us see what are its mandates. So, main, the main mandates are transfer technology to industry for producing the commercially successful PSLV spacecraft launchers. That is its one of mandate, one of its mandate and also regarding SSLV. That is uh, to outsource assembly of small satellites and also the upcoming small so uh, satellite launch vehicle that is SSLV and another mandate is that commercially exploit the research and development work done by the ISRO centers and its DOS constituents. So, these are some of its mandates and about Antrix, we know that this Antrix it is the commercial arm of ISRO and this Andrix Corporation Limited, it is incorporated on 1992 under the Companies Act of 1956. Okay, so it was set up in September 1992 to market the products and also the services of ISRO. So the thing is that uh, actually it is a wholly, it is uh, fully a government of India owned company under the uh, administrative control of Department of Space. Okay, so the next important point, it is a very important point that is, that is in the year 2008, the company it was awarded the Mini Retna status. Okay, so we all heard about this. So, uh, please note that in 2008, it was awarded the Mini Retna status and this Antrix uh, actually it promotes the commercial, commercially markets the products as well as the services which are emanating from the ISRO program or the Indian Space program. Okay, that is about this and tricks. And uh, let us discuss its current business activities. So, the current business activities of Andrix include provisioning of uh, communication satellite transponders to various users and also providing launch services for customer satellites then marketing of this data from Indian as well as foreign remote sensing satellites, then uh, and uh, uh, also the some of mission support services for satellites, then um, establishing certain ground infrastructure for 
space application. So, these are some of the business activities that is the current business activities of Antrix. Okay. So, that is all. Uh, coming to our second topic that is SKA project. So, the news is that a supercomputer it has been designed to run the world's largest radio telescope that is square kilometer array or SKA. Okay, that is the news. So, actually what is this radio astronomy? This, uh, in this radio astronomy, the radio telescope, uh, it will actually detect the waves in different part of the electromagnetic spectrum that is uh, from light waves uh, which the optical telescope can detect. Okay, so in an electromagnetic spectrum, you know that there will be gamma rays, X rays, ultraviolet rays, visible, then uh, infrared, microwave and finally radio rays. This forms the electromagnetic spectrum and uh, it, we can, um, we know that it is arranged in the uh, proportion of this radiation type or uh, in the uh, order of frequency, etc. Then, about this SKA project, actually, uh, the square kilometer array project, it is an international effort to build the world's largest uh, radio telescope with eventually over a square kilometer of collecting area. And the thing is that it will be located in Australia and South Africa. And this SKA, it will eventually use thousands of dishes and up to a million low frequency antennas. And actually, this will enable the astronomers uh, or it will help the astronomers to monitor the sky uh, and uh, even in its unprecedented detail and also to conduct certain surveys that the entire sky much faster than any system currently in existence. That is the importance of this SKA project. Okay, uh, or we can say that it is a unique config configuration and it will give the SKA untrivial scoping observation that is largely exceeding the image resolution quality of Hubble Space Telescope. And this organization uh, from 13 countries, they are the members of this SKA organization. Uh, the member countries are Australia, Canada, China, then France, Germany, India, India is also a member, then Italy, New Zealand, South Africa, Spain, Sweden, Netherlands and United Kingdom. Okay, so the organization from 13 countries are members of this SKA organization. Clear. Then uh, coming to our next topic, that is Artemis. The news is that the NASA's Artemis mission game plan, it involves 37 launches and a base on the moon. Okay, so uh, actually what is this Artemis? This Artemis, it is the name of um, a NASA's program in order to return the astronauts to the lunar surface by 2024. Okay, that is uh, including the first woman and the next man. And this Artemis, it was the twin sister of Apollo and the uh, goddess of moon in the Greek mythology. And uh, this Artemis, it refers to acceleration, reconnection, turbulence and electrodynamics of the moon's interaction with sun. And the thing is that this astronaut, they will step foot where no human beings have entered, uh, have entered before or entered before that is in the moon's south pole. Okay, so the uh, thing is that as a result of this Artemis, this NASA, they will be able to establish a sustainable human presence on the moon by 2028. So, that is a great project actually and uh, they will be able to uncover new scientific discoveries and uh, they will be able to demonstrate new technical advancement then and also lay the foundation of private companies to build a lunar economy. Then next we have to know about Themis. Actually this Themis, it was originally a constellation of five NASA satellites. Its main purpose is to study the energy released from the Earth's magnetosphere which is known as substorm. And uh, the thing is that on May 19, 2008, the Space Sciences Laboratory, that is SSL, at, uh, it is located in Berkeley. It has officially approved the movement of Themis B and Themis C into the lunar orbit under the mission name Artemis. 
Okay, that is all about the thermals. Our next topic that is Simlipal Biosphere Reserve. So, actually, where it came in news that a new wine snake, uh, which it was named as Ahatula Lodnakia, actually, it was a scientific name, and it was discovered in this Odisha Simlipal Biosphere Reserve. That is the news. So, talking about Simlipal Biosphere Reserve, we know that. Uh, the Simlipal Biosphere Park, it is a national park and also a tiger reserve and it is located in the Mayur Bhaj district in the Indian state of Odisha. And uh, uh, another thing is that it is a part of uh, Simlipal, Kuldik and Hadgar Elephant Reserve which was popularly known as the Mayur Bhaj Elephant Reserve. So, actually this park, it derives its name from the abundance of semul. Actually, the semul uh, it is uh, locally known as red silk cotton tree and that uh, this semul, it blooms here. Okay, that is how it derives its name and uh, another thing is that this reserve, actually it is a part of UNESCO World Network Biosphere Reserve since 2009. Okay, that is all. And in today in map, map aided program, we will be dealing with the important ports in India and they are first is Mumbai port. So, we know that it is a natural harbour and it is the biggest port of India and uh, it handles approximately 1 by 5th of India's foreign trade. Next port that is Navaseva, it is uh, located in Mumbai and next one is Chennai port. This Chennai port, we know that it is the oldest artificial harbour and it is located on the eastern coast and another importance is that it is the second largest port in terms of its volume of traffic. I am talking about NO, it is the first corporate port, uh, so it was built to release the pressure on this Chennai port. Next is the Tutikorin port, it is on the eastern coast of India and next one Kandla port, it is, in the, it is actually a tidal port and it is uh, built to release the pressure on the Mumbai port and it is developed actually after the partition of India and it is located in Gujarat. Okay. Then Cochin port, we know that it is a natural harbour. Then Vishakapatanam, it is a deepest artificial harbour on eastern coast. Next is the Kolkata. Kolkata, it is a, it is a riverine port and uh, uh, next port that is Haldia. Haldia port, it is uh, actually it is developed on Hooghly river and uh, next port that is Parabi. It is located on the Orissa coast. Then Marma Goa, we know that it is on Goa and actually it is a fifth uh, port in total traffic handled. And next is New Mangalore, it is on, it is located on New Mangalore. So, these are the important ports in India and uh, here I have got a map and I have, um, and I have marked all the locations here. Here you can see the artificial ports and uh, almost all the ports in India. Okay. So, next in prelims question revision series today our question is with reference to organic farming in India consider the following statements and the statements the national program for organic production uh, it is operated under the guidelines and directions of the union ministry of rural development that is the first statement and the second statement the agricultural and processed food products expert development authority that is APEDA. It functions as the secretariat for the implementation of NBOP. And third statement, Sikkim has become India's first fully organic state. Here actually, uh, which of the statement given is or are correct? Option A, 1 and 2 only, B, 2 and 3 only, C, 3 only and D, 1, 2 and 3. Okay. So, here we can uh, take E statement. So, let us see the first statement. That is the national program for organic uh, production, it is operated under the guidelines and directions of Union Ministry of Rural Development. We know that the Ministry of Commerce, it has implemented this NPOP since 2001. So, the first statement it will be obviously wrong. And coming to second statement, the Agricultural and Processed Food Products Expert Development Authority, it functions as the Secretariat for the implementation of NPOP. That is a correct statement. So, uh, second option is right. Then uh, third one, Sikkim has become India's first fully organic state. That is a correct statement. We know that Sikkim has become India's first fully organic state in 2016. And it has achieved that status by implementing organic practice 
uh, owned around 75,000 hectares of agricultural land. Okay, so uh, our answer will be B that is 2 and 3 only. So, our answer is B. Okay, so uh, that is all for today's session. You can download the material from the link given below. Thank you for listening.